This is question three from paper four one from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International and it's the mechanics paper. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a card that will bring you to the playlist that has all my solutions to every question in this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question. So you can try it before looking at this solution. This question is fully set up using English. They tell us that a particle P, which I've drawn in here, this dot, is um, projected vertically upwards with a speed of 5 meters per second uh, from a point A, which is 2.8 meters above the ground. I've also just jotted in that we're going to use gravity as 10, 10 meters per second. And they ask us a couple of questions. The first question is, find the greatest height above the ground that P reaches. Now, most times you'd see a question like this answered using the motion equations. They're the ones, uh, you're, you're all very familiar with them. The ones like uh, V is equal to U plus AT, those type of ones. I, I personally don't use them. I don't particularly like using them. I love teaching where they come from because how I'm going to do this question is using the basic... Um, the basic way we derive these, I, I always do it from first principles as it were. Now, it's perfectly okay to use these equations, but I think you learn more about mechanics in general doing the way I'm about to do. So let's jump in. How do I do it? I set up and then I try and find everything about this question. I start off with a deceleration first, and deceleration is a nice constant. When you move on from this sort of level, sometimes the acceleration might not be constant, but the acceleration is equal to 10. I then find what the speed is, the velocity, and to find the velocity from acceleration, we just integrate. So if we, inter sorry, this should be minus 10. We're, we're going down um, here. We just integrate minus 10. Integrate a constant, we get uh, multiplied by what we're integrating over, which is time in this case. Also, there'd be a constant, plus c. But the, the constant is just the initial, the initial um, state of a system. And in this case, they tell us the initial state is five. So we can just write that in. And then I integrate this again to get the displacement, the distance, the, the, the displacement, how much it has moved. So we integrate this, we get t uh, squared, it goes up one. We divide this by two then. So we get minus five, plus we integrate this, we get five t, and we need the initial, the initial uh, state of this system. Now you could zero and start here, but I'll put, I'll use the ground as, uh, as my initial state, so I'll use 2.8, because we're 2.8 up. Now, this tells you everything you need to know. If you use those, those equations that are in your book, you'll get this information as well. It's the same information. Right, so what did they ask? They asked for the, the greatest height this reaches. I, I'd always put these three down, really, in any question like this. I'd start like this. So the greatest height that's reached... Well, the greatest height will be when the speed is equal to zero. So this is a common question. So it's something to keep in mind. Uh, when we want the greatest height, it's when the, the velocity will start um, equaling zero, <laughs> when it stops. So that means uh, V equals zero, which is equal to minus 10T plus 5. Uh, let's rearrange this. We'll get minus 5 is equal to minus 10T. So that means T is equal to a half. Now that doesn't tell us the height, but it tells us what time the height is at. So when, we're, when time is a half a second, we will be at the greatest height. Well, here's the displacement here. This will, the height we could call it if you want. So S is equal to minus five, a half squared plus five times a half plus 2.8. You can go ahead and put that in a calculator or you can do it by hand. It's uh, five over four plus 5 over 2, or let's, let's call that 10 over 4. And, um, well, no, I'll use a calculator anyway, because I don't know how to do that. Well, I don't want to do it. Hell, even I'm not going to even use a calculator. I've already done this out earlier. It's 4.05, if you put it in, and leave in the units. So 4.05 meters, that's above the ground. You could get different answers to this if you had to put zero here, which was perfectly okay. You would just have to remember to add 2.8 at the end because you're getting the displacement starting at this point, which is an understandable one to do. If you used your normal formulas, I think you'd probably miss out on this 2.8 and you'd have to add it in at the end. Now, um, let's do part B. Part B to asks us to find the length of time 
for which P is at a height of more than 3.6 meters. So somewhere up more than this. So it goes up and comes back down. Uh, let's draw a quick little graph of that. Uh, we'll, we'll draw this versus time, the height or displacement, we'll write uh, displacement versus um, time. It starts at 2.8 and it goes up something like this and then hits the ground. And lots of students get confused by this. This, this particle is going up and straight back down. This is not the shape of it's being thrown or anything. This, usually time doesn't work. Uh, we don't see time usually. So this is, as time moves, this is the height. So it's still going up and back down. So there is a, there is a number, let's see, it's 3.6. So we really just need to find what time these two points are. What, what is this time and what is this time? So it'll be easy then to find how long it's up in the air. Take this time minus this time. This isn't too difficult. We we'll, should be able to find an equation for this. It's right here, in fact. S, um, the quadratic equation right here will describe this completely. So all we need to do is use this equation, minus 5t squared plus 5t plus 2.8 is equal. We want to find these two points. So when it's equal to 3.6, that will solve these two points for us. We just need to rearrange this. You don't need to um, make it neat or anything. Um, I would go ahead and use the minus b. Actually, we can solve it without. So let's let's do it that way. Minus five t squared plus five t. Um, this would become m minus one point eight uh, equals zero. Maybe multiply everything by. Yeah, I want to get rid of this decimal. Multiply everything by 5 or minus 5 would get rid of that as well. 25t squared um, minus 25t plus, multiply this by 5, we would get 9. Now, 9 does not look right to me, and that's because <laughs> um, 2.8 minus 3.6 is 0 0.8, not 1.8. Multiply by, I, I'd already done this, so that's why I knew 9 wasn't right. Multiply this by minus 5, we get plus 4. That's more like what I remember. And uh, we, we can go ahead and factorize this. Although, you could just use the minus b formula on, on either of these. And we get 5t and 5t works, and 4 and 1 works. What do we get? We get uh, 20t. And another 5t, so yes, we can get to 25 if they're both minus. And uh, minus 1 by minus 4 will get to plus 4. So we're left with t is equal 1 divided by 5, or 0 0.2 seconds. Uh, or we'll get t is equal to 4 over 5, which is equal to 0 0.8 seconds. And that's these two numbers here, 0 0.2 and 0 0.8. So to answer that question, how long is it? Is it up in the air? How long is it between here and here? Well, it must be the difference of these. So uh, the change in time, you don't have to write it like that, is equal to 0 0.6 seconds. Didn't need to write this second or this seconds here, but this, this letter is important. Don't forget your units and your final answer. You're allowed to ignore them in the middle of your question, not the final answer. So the change in time um, is 0 0.6 seconds. That's the full marks to that question. I think if you have, and that's question three as well, I missed that out. Um, if you have any follow-up questions or want to point out anything I did wrong, there was one mistake at least, <laughs> but at least I caught that one myself. Uh, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.